Okay, so for those that forgot how to make a contingency table, um, all you got to do is click on stat and then click on tables. And then you'll go ahead and see the contingency and you're going to do it with data because in this case, I do have the data, right? Uh, so let me tell you before a little bit what this data is about. So I this is data is gender, right? So male or female, uh, sports, this uh, column says if they're an athlete or not an athlete. And then these are all um, other variables. So anger out, anger in. So we wanted to make sure or see if athletes tend to have more anger, in, hold it in or held it out. And we uh, compared it with people that were not athletes. Okay. So anyways, let's say I wanted to know how many of the females or males are athletes. What is the distribution? So all I got was this data. So how can I go ahead and figure that out? So like I said, let's click on stat, then let's click on tables, and then contingency with data. Okay, now in this case, I'm just gonna, it doesn't really matter what you can label your row or column, but your row, I'm just going to go ahead and put gender, that's going to be my gender. And then the column is going to be the sports. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, click compute. And what I'm going to get is this. I'm going to get my contingency table. So here, let me go ahead and maximize it. Here it tells me that 14 females were athletes, right? 34 were females and not athletes. 11 of them were athletes and males, right? 19 were not athletes and males, right? And then here's other stuff, right? Uh, this thing is what we're going to be covering next week. So don't worry about what this means. But th yeah, this is basically how you go ahead and do a contingency table. So um, in your take-home exam, um, there is one problem where you have to do this. So now you know how to go ahead and, and construct this, okay?